All right, here is the jar of the curdled milk. It took about three days actually, so the time lapse didn't really pan out. But you have a clear ish watery layer. And then you have a layer here that looks kind of like cottage cheese. Wait for it curds and whey. The more you know. So it's a big plug. I'll do the unveiling, do the big reveal here. It gloves for sciencey stuff. Good look there. It's not, not bad looking. Like I said, it's kind of like cottage cheese. Actually, doesn't smell bad at all. So we're going to take this part of the milk, and we're going to mix it with the pigment, and we're going to make some paint. Look what it tastes like. So back again in the name of science. Like I said, this is kind of cottage cheesy looking. Now there's a little bit, I may have let it sit too long, there's a little bit of a red tinge on the edge there. That's probably some sort of bacteria I shouldn't be dicking with, but this is science. You can tell by the gloves. So, actually it smells really good, nice and clean. Um, so of course I wonder what it tastes like. Like a thin cottage cheese. Little, little tangy. It's kind of tangy. Yeah. I wouldn't eat a large amount of that unless I was starving and then I could actually probably choke that down without too much trouble. Not the best looking stuff, but we're going to see what happens once we mix it with the pigment and make some beautiful paint out of it. A la Martha, Martha Stewart. Okay, so we're back. We're going to try adding the pigments now. We've got some, uh, this is like some cheap acrylic paint from Walmart. There's a red and a blue and I was looking for some powdered dyes I had. This is actually natural indigo so that might be kind of interesting and some food coloring just for grins to see what will happen. You'll have get that. Here's the bag of the whey W-H-E-Y. Oh wait no I'm sorry these are curds. The whey was the liquid part. These are the curds. Been in the fridge for about a week. Still smells good. So I'm going to put out a couple different portions of the curds, mix in the pigment, get a brush and slap it on that terracotta pot, see what we get. And we're mixing, mixing, mixing. A little grainy. That might be a little hard to see, but we've got good natural light out here. Golden hour. So the blue, not bad at all. Mix a little bit of the blue, and the, I know that you don't really make purple that way, but... Okay, it's not going to work. All right, so then, what is next? Let's do the indigo, because I'm kind of curious. That's actually a really, really nice, deep blue. I don't know how well you can see that, but that blue is almost black. So, the other end of that spoon. Pull this out a little bump. Ski, we'll mix that in. Hard to see. I bet you that almost looks green. It's just such a dark, dark, dark blue. But we can also thin it out a little bit and add a little bit more. Be an outlaw and just mix the shit, not care. Okay. So it's not really scientific, but you get the idea. That's not, and you can see the difference between the two shades. And also it'll be interesting to see what it looks like when we get it on the actual terracotta pots. Now you can use this paint for other things. I think you can use it for furniture and wood and different things. I just happen to be painting terracotta. So that's what we're doing today. And then for the last selection, Let's do some cheap food coloring. What do we got? There we go. Wilton. This is the gel. Uh, let's do drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so here we are with the eight drops. And that pile there, it's coming out a nice 
kind of green, real dark, the Kelly green, we'll see. You can kind of change the shade by mixing and changing the curd to, sorry there for the shake, the curd to pigment ratio. Have fun, experiment, I mean it's just cheap paint, so do whatever you want to do. Make happy little trees, or you know, go all Bob Ross. Enjoy it. Non-toxic. You could probably eat that. Let me see. Eh, okay, maybe a little. See? This is science, people. Sometimes you have to sacrifice. I'm putting my science in my mouth for you guys. Meh. I don't know if it's ever going to catch on, but... Didn't kill me. Neither did the last one when I ate the, the curds that we made them. They had a really nice, clean smell to them. Decent taste. A little tangy, but, you know, we survived. So there is our green, green food coloring and curds. Then we have indigo. You can see how it's kind of jean colored. J-E-A-N, like blue jeans. That's where they get it from. The blue, and then of course, the red, which came out a little bit pinkish, but we'll deal. Other ones, we'll put one coat of the darker color around the edge and then maybe thin it out and put it on the pot itself see what happens so this is going to be a really crappy paint job because I'm mostly doing this so that we can see the color come out so uh, you have somebody like me can do it anybody can do this this is actually not half bad alright so a little more Take it all the way around. Like I said, I'm disappointed. It said red, but we're not more of a mauve or pink. We'll see what we get on the end there. That might not actually come out too bad. I'm kind of liking that as it dries, to be quite honest. I'm actually kind of liking that. Not half bad, if I do say so myself. Okay, this is a slightly lighter one. I've got the brush loaded kind of heavy, so we're just going to smack, just slap that on and see what we get. I said, you can see some of the paint, or the curds are still in there, so I don't know if we get kind of like a neat little distressed look. It would be kind of interesting, but this was definitely thinned out with more of the curds. Like I said, I'm just going to have haphazardly slap that on there. See if we get kind of like a distressed look. Don't be afraid to experiment. Try a different thing. Like I said, we're going to go all Bob Ross here. See what we get. Nice. Okay. So, I'll leave a little bit, I can go in later and fill that with a different color, or just leave it and make it look weatherized, or you can rub part of it off, and a lot you can do with this. So there's the red. Let's try it. Alright, let's see how we do here. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole pot, one shade, and I've got a lot of the blue. Oh, hell, I'll tell you what, let's be crazy. I'm going to put the blue color on the bottom here. This is from the acrylic paint. Slap some of that on there. Blah, blah, blah. Just showing you that it doesn't have to be perfect. I like it to have a little bit of a worn look like we've actually used and it's not like right from the store. A little bit of a distressed look like it's been knocked around for a while and we've had it and we're old money and okay, maybe not that much, but you know, okay. So there's that. It is really a light blue called um, Blue Bonnet Blue, but now let's see what happens if we contrast that with the indigo. Okay, clean the brush, and now we're going to go back and we're going to pick up some of that indigo pigment. Very interesting. I don't need that. Okay, now we've got the indigo pigment on the brush. I cleaned it in between the two different shades so we can see what effect we get. That goes on surprisingly light interesting but it's two completely different types of pigments one's an acrylic paint and this is a natural i don't know what this is crushed beetle shells or seashells or something wherever the indigo comes from little baby indigos or indigo plants or i don't know that was the original dye for the blue jeans as well it takes a decent amount to cover that that acrylic goes on thinner because it doesn't take nearly as much to get the coverage with the natural pigments it might take a little bit more 
I'm going to set these out in the sun and let them kind of bake dry. I'm going to double coat this just to see what happens and use up all the pigment, all the paint. Do, do, do. A little bit around the rim. And kind of wipe it off, a little bit of a distressed look. All right. I'll throw some more of that bluer color down there on the bottom just for grins. Okay. Blue. Well, I did also want to point out one thing. When I was researching the paint, this is Apple Barrel. It's made by the Plaid brand. They make a lot of pigments and craft stuff. Actually, really good product. I was surprised. I thought it would be cheap made in China crap. It's not. Non-toxic, really well made, good quality stuff. So anything by Plaid, P-L-A-I-D, seems to be really good. Okay, I'll do my best to keep it all in frame, but, you know, shoestring budget productions here. So I'm just going to do the rim first, because I think that's the part that I mostly want the pigment on. Yeah, that's a nice, not quite a hunter green, maybe more of a Kelly. I think it's a bit brighter. But that was from the food coloring and the curds. So this is just an experiment, see what happens. I don't care if it's lumpy or even or anything. I'm going to slap some color on there. See what happens. Because America. All right. I'm in the dark, but meh, whatever. Load it up again. Slap some. <laughs> now, actually, this almost could pass for like a faux algae kind of thing if you wanted to do that. I'll just do that and see how that works. I'll put a layer at the bottom there. Some little splotches and go for like a faux algae. Okay, I'm going to call that about done. That might be hard to see, I know. I'm a flat, matte pot. The paint's a little glossy, shiny, but it dries in real quick. So it'll be interesting to see what we get off of that. I'm going to come back in a couple of days after we have let it dry in the sun and bake and finish drying up and curing and everything. See what we get. This is where we use the green food coloring and the milk. It's actually good paint. It stays on there really well. It's supposed to look kind of like moss and sort of a distressed look anyway, so it's not supposed to be perfect. But durable, decent color, really close to what I wanted anyway. Hot Rod Red actually came out a little pink for my taste. But again, durable, doesn't scratch off. Not bad at all. This is the indigo. A little gritty, but that seems all right. And this is the acrylic paint mixed in with the uh, curds. So, I don't know. But it seems pretty tough. Actually, fairly impressed with it. So, milk paint, not nearly as hard as it would seem. And Martha Stewart approved. Here's another look at the pods in the natural light. Indigo on the top. It was supposed to be thin and sort of a distressed look, so I'm happy with it. Um, acrylic paint and the curds on the bottom. And really durable, held up well. I'm going for kind of a real light blue. Real happy with that. And I'm also kind of curious if the lighter color is going to reflect some of the heat and keep the pots a little bit cooler. We'll see. Here's a look at the paint made with the milk curds and the green food coloring. Um, it's at least a week old. It's been out in the sun. No fading or chipping or anything. It's supposed to be thin and distressed in areas. So it looks the way that it's supposed to. It's supposed to be a little moss there on the bottom. It'll age in nicely, I think. Real happy with that overall. So curds and some store brand food coloring. Might have been fancy national brand stuff, but still. That would go really, really far if you had a lot of these to do. Really could stretch out the paint.